guys, it's me again. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. So this You Can Too video is a little bit different to my normal You Can Too videos where I'd be like how I got a 9 in the subject, how I got an A star in the subject. But today I'm going to be talking to you guys how I went from an E to an A in A level further maths. Before we get started, you guys know the drill. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly. Anyways, guys, let's just jump right in. So for my videos, my channel, the type of content I put out there, I feel like you guys might think that academics are something that just comes naturally to Puri. But I wanted to make this video to show you that that is not actually the case. You know, some subjects obviously come naturally to me than others, just like it would for anybody else. But I really, really had to work hard for certain subjects, such as further math. So I'm going to be talking to you about my whole further maths journey and then what I did to sort of combat those issues and, you know, improve my further maths. So if you have seen my painful experience of moving to a private school video, I will link it up there, then you guys will know that for my A-levels, we had decided that I was going to move to a private school that was supposed to be one of the best in Nottingham. Um, the experience that I ended up having there caused me to move back to my current school, well, my secondary school, which had a sixth form. And so I moved back there and a lot of the issues stemmed around my further maths classes. So the majority of schools that offer A-level further maths will have a system where they teach further maths in a separate class to the normal maths. So for me, in my school, current school, I had five hours of normal maths and five hours of further maths in a week. They were two different classes. Whereas some schools, and this school particularly, they ran their further math classes as such that they did all of the normal maths in year one, so year 12, and then all of the two years of further maths content in year 13. So you wouldn't really get to see what further maths is like until year 13, although you're taking further maths, right? If you wanna know what happened, I have linked the video up there, so check that out, watch that video. But to keep things short, in a nutshell, what happened was the way they were teaching, I just didn't get on with it and I wasn't getting the support that you deserve at a private school, what you're paying for, you know, you expect things to be a certain standard. I didn't get that. And on top of that, the head of maths department even told me further maths probably isn't the one for you, you should consider dropping it if you're still struggling within a couple of weeks. That is what I was told. So you might be wondering, how can you struggle with further maths at the private school when you weren't even taught it by then? Well, that's because at that school in the further maths classes, they skipped out many topics that were taught in ad maths as a GCSE, as most of the students were already from that school or another private school beforehand. Most of them did ad maths before. My school didn't give us that option, so I didn't. When I raised this concern before starting, I was told it wouldn't be an issue, however it was. The details are in the video linked in the description and in the i button above in the corner. Leaving that school, coming to my school, I still did take further maths because I wanted to do economics at uni and I knew it would massively help me. However, my confidence was so low for further maths, right? I've always been someone who's very confident in my academics, you know, I've always been someone who's just a confident person in general. I really, I still am. But... After that experience and what happened after, because I got a lot of trolling after that video from the students there, they deleted their comments now, but anyway, I got a lot of trolling, so that put me in a very dark place, I would say, and on top of that, further maths was really, really bad for me, because when I moved schools, so I moved back to my school, I was finding it hard, because I had missed five weeks of further maths, because that school was doing normal maths. So I had to catch up massively, and that was really, really hard for me. Um, I was struggling for further maths for, I would say, the majority of year 12, mainly because I just was like, if it's not for me, whatever, I'm going to drop it after year 12, I'm not going to need it, I'm not going to revise it, so I ended up not revising further maths a lot, I mainly revised maths and economics a little bit of physics as well. Like I told you guys before, my school still did AS exams, which meant we had formal exams at the end of year 12. Our formal exams were, I believe, April to May time, maybe even June time. So around those months, we had our formal exams. After that is when we had open days to universities. So July time is when most of the universities had like open days and stuff like that where you could go. This is when I went to Cambridge and LSE two days back to back in July. When I went to LSE, that is when I found out that 
if you don't take further maths, they pretty much don't look at your application. This is what the admissions people told me. And the thing is, on their website and their criteria, it doesn't say that you need to take further maths. They still told me that, you know, they were updating their prospectus and their, like, or information they were going to put that on there but at the time they didn't have that on their website so basically when I went there I said that you know I plan on dropping further maths so you know will I still be blah, 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 okay the admissions people said there are five percent of people who get offers from LSE without further maths as an A-level and those five percent of people are people who did not have the option of further maths at their school if their school didn't offer further maths those were the people that were part of the five percent of people who got offers from LSE. Other than that, further maths was pretty much a standard. She did say to me, however, if you're taking AS further maths, you need to get an A in your AS and then you can drop it. If not, you just need a C if you've got four subjects, you know? So that was what I was told and I was like, I need to take further maths to be even considered. Because for me, it wasn't just an LSE thing. If LSE is one of the top economics universities, it's gonna be a similar thing at all of these other universities. Because what I was told was, the majority of your first year content is your A-level further maths content in stats and stuff like that. So it will massively help you and I'd be at a disadvantage again if I didn't take further maths as an A-level. If I dropped it, I'd be at that same disadvantage that I had because I couldn't do ad maths as a GCSE. I didn't want to be in that same position. It was a very very hard pill to swallow but it was something that i just had to do and at my school if you had got an e or above which is a pass as an as you could take it on to do in year 13 if you you know failed if you got a u or anything below an e you can't take it so i was just hoping that for my as exam i was gonna pass it i was like in two minds whether i was gonna pass or fail further maths because i didn't revise for it for my as exam i barely revised for it i focused on maths economics and a bit of physics as well I barely revised for it so you can imagine that is a recipe for disaster to be able to do well at an A-level you have to revise it's not something that will just come to you in A-levels that is one very important thing you can be the best of the best in your GCSEs and not have to revise and still do get good grades right I didn't revise my GCSE already and I still got a nine I hated it god knows how but if I did that in my A-levels, I would fail. You cannot go into A-levels without revising and expect to do well. I didn't revise for my A-level AS exam for further maths because I just didn't care. I was like, I'm dropping it. I don't need to do well. Let me focus on my other subjects that I'm continuing on into year 13. And that is why I literally, after July, because results day would have been in August, for that whole month I was stressing, what if I don't pass further maths? Am I going to be able to take it and like... I was stressed out and you don't want to be in that position that I was in like that's one piece of advice I'd give you don't do the same mistakes that I did if you know well I didn't know to be fair it wasn't entirely my fault because I didn't really know that you know the top universities need further maths but after I found that out there wasn't much that I could do but continue with further maths but I'm so glad that I went to the open day because I found out that I needed further maths as an A-level so in my AS results day I ended up getting two A's in maths and economics, an A in my EPQ, a C in physics, and an E in further maths. Being someone who got the grades that I got in my GCSEs, an E wasn't really something that I wanted, you know, who wants an E? But I was just happy that I passed it because that meant I could have kept it on to year 13. And I knew that, okay, I still have to take it, but I just need to get a C. That's all I need to get in my further maths for my A2. And that's another mistake that I just, I would say, just, if they say you need a C, just don't listen to that. Try and aim even higher than that because the majority of people are going to come in there applying to the top universities with even better grades than the minimum requirements. You don't want to be in comparison to the best of the best with your average grades. Like a C is an average grade. That's my hindsight speaking, but at the time I thought, they told me I need a C. That's it. I've got my C in further maths prediction because I got that for my prediction, right? And I thought that was something that I could do. I ended up working so extremely hard to the point where in one of my marks, I ended up getting the highest in the class, right? This was my Christmas mark. So it was, yeah, our Christmas mark. I got the highest in the class for my further maths mock exam. And that was something that was so mind-blowing to me because in year 12, 
and got an A. So there was four people who continued further maths into year 13. Two of them got Ds and then two of us got Es as well. Even my teacher who gave us, um, even my stats teacher, he gave us our exam papers back. He was like, can you guess who got the highest? I was like, oh yeah, these guys. Because they, they were the smartest of the class, right? They always got the highest. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Because I knew that I was going to get the lowest. I thought I was going to get the lowest. And he burst out laughing. And he's like, no, it's Parry, you got the highest. And I was just like, what? The other guys, because there was three guys and there was just me. The other guys were just like, but yeah. That was like my proud moment because turning myself around from being someone at the bottom and then turning into someone who was at the top really made me happy. I got a B in that mark. And then I ended up getting on track to basically get an A in terms of my classwork. So my in-class work, we had like loads of mini assessments. I got like regular A's in those as well. And so that's why I ended up with an A in my final result. So now the story's out of the way, in terms of what I did, to move myself from that E grade to eventually an A grade, although it was, I targeted a C and then eventually an A. What I did was, I used the textbooks. These are your pure further maths books. And then we also had it discrete. So we had two modules that I think your teachers choose. So we had the discrete, so decision maths, and then we also had stats. We only got this book, I think, part way through year 13. We were not given this book in year 12 because I don't think they had the books in year 12 so we were like working off paper that's another thing that was really annoying we didn't have the textbooks for discrete or statistics we had to go off like little pieces of paper and like booklets my teacher made us we never had the textbooks and i find the textbooks so helpful i still don't have a discrete textbook we just never got that but my teachers ended up giving us the stats books as well and these are also exactly what I said for my A-level maths video. Textbooks are a massive part of your revision. To be honest, there wasn't that much that I did. It's just a case of going from not revising and not caring in year 12 to actually really caring and being hard working in further maths. In the timetable aspect, I penciled in a few hours a week for A-level further maths. In that period of time, I did revise chapters so i would try and revise a whole chapter at a time i had a, a notebook i went through my chapters so for chapter one complex numbers put that as a title wrote down the key points so i squared equals minus one i equals root minus one type thing and then i worked through the worked examples and then i did pretty much the majority of the exercises in the book and then i also did the mixed practices which is like the whole summary and exam style questions of the whole entire chapter put together that is what really really helps me not not just get that c grade but that is what helped me go from the c to the a the textbooks are so incredible another thing that really massively contributed to my success in further maths was my teacher so my pure maths teacher she was amazing she's called miss nidran and we are still close to this day like you won't believe at the start of year 12 she made me cry because she was so intense with maths like you know she's one of those teachers that she knows you can do well so she's tough on you so if you're doing something wrong she'll be tough on you but when you get things right she's the nicest person ever so i went from being quite upset when i first moved to like to my school in year 12 sorry i said the name i was in a dark place anyway i was quite low and everything she supported me so much because she knew that i needed further math and she knew i needed to do well in it so she helped me so much she spent her own time helping me with things that i was struggling with so she'd go through certain subjects with me certain topics with me so i would really massively suggest you guys that in your free periods if you can they might be dropping clinics or if you can arrange something with your third maths teacher go to them with questions specifically or topics specifically you struggle with and they can go through them with you so my third maths teacher what she did do with me in the periods where she wasn't teaching so if she had an hour free and if i happened to have a free period that time she would say come to my classroom i'd go to her classroom and with my textbooks and all my questions and she'd teach me that literally for the hour. The type of teaching massively changes things. So it wasn't just my content, it was the confidence that changed. So when you see how I was treated in my in the private school for my further maths teacher, the videos up there, if you look at that compared to my further maths teacher now, and you can see the massive difference. Like she was hard on me. She wasn't just hard on me, she was hard on my whole class. 
and that's why my whole class did well. So we went from in year 12, all of us doing subpar, to getting A's, A stars. Having that rapport with your teacher will massively improve things. You need to build that rapport because further maths is known to be the hardest A level. So if you can do things to help you with your learning, such as building really good rapports with your teachers, it will help you. An hour a week of additional support transformed me from the C to the A. I think that is a massive contribution of what helps me transform from a C to A. I only had an hour extra with her like weekly and that hour helped me massively. Like I said before, it's not just about revising, revising, it's about the confidence you have within yourself. So the final thing I'm going to talk about is all the sorts of websites that you can use online. So after we sort of covered our whole content, my teacher was so fast with the content, she was so fast paced, like we covered everything so quick so we had a lot of time for revision so every week after that she set us um mini assessments where we would do in class assessments based on the chapters we've done i think we would have one year 12 mini assessment from a chapter from year 12 a week and a one year 13 one in that week as well i i think it was either that or one every week so alternating and she basically set us work from those websites that we would do every week so if your teacher doesn't do that do this for yourself because that helped our class polish our knowledge off so basically set yourself mini assessments every week based on like online sort of past papers we also used physics and maths tutor that was really good. I've said that for my economics. I've talked that about that at length. It's brilliant. It doesn't just give you stuff for economics. It also gives you stuff for further maths, besides integral maths. So the main websites we use integral for like personal revision at home and stats and discrete maths, so decision maths. Then we used exam solutions for our mini assessments in class. And we also used physics and maths tutor as well sometimes. So we alternated between those and they are really good websites. So yeah guys, that is basically how I went from an E to an A in my A level further maths. And if I can do that, you definitely can too. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a huge thumbs up and smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly. Anyways guys, I will see you next time. Bye.